Okay, you're recording. Sure. Yep, you're good. <laughs> you got all of that on Periscope, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Even the goofy stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've been having a lot of technical difficulties using Periscope, and we have to use Periscope, and we have to use Ustream, and we've been just having a real fun time tonight uh, getting all this. So you, you've been watching a lot of stuff that we really don't want to record, but it's going to be recorded anyway. Okay. So right here we are at the official start of tonight's Law of Attraction, uh, Emotion Code, Body Code, Psyche meeting. Okay. So I just want to welcome everybody. You know, we have a lot of people now that are following us on um, on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, so welcome, as usual. We have a, a new person uh, tonight. <laughs> you know, love having it. And uh, I had some things that I wanted to uh, go over, but we have we got some interesting news uh, this afternoon. One of our members uh, had been battling leukemia, and she got the word today that she's completely healed. All of her test results and blood work yeah. came back uh, to show that she's in, in complete remission. And so we were celebrating with her, uh, with the good news and everything. So, you know, I asked her, uh, what do you attribute your healing to? And she says, oh, wow, you know, everything. You know, she, uh, the type of leukemia that she had, there was no cure. And she's into energy healing, holistic living. And she just, you know, names, you know, several things, you know, law of attraction, positive thinking inner healings, which is one of the things that Leslie and I, that I do, and I'm just really elated that she has received the healing. That, that's uh, one of uh, our specialties, is to coach people uh, back from the brink. You know, we actually started in this, oh boy, um, 10 years or so ago uh, at a clinic, at a holistic uh, clinic in Tulsa, uh, ministering to people with cancer and other chronic diseases. And we, we had uh, quite a few healings. We used to call it back, um, we called it emotional work for lack of a better term. And, and we kept evolving and um, developing and learning new methods, new modalities. And, um, and over the years that, you know, we're, we're here at this point now. So, you know, we, we can't, you know, uh, my name is Denise, uh, uh, the credit, she deserves all the credit, you know, because she made the changes internally and mentally, um, how she thought and kept the right attitude to affect her own healing. Uh, you know, we're, we're just glad that we could play a small role or part in that. Um, through this past year. You know, we actually started this group last April, I believe. And we had a lot of energy healers. And I've learned quite a bit uh, from them really? uh, yeah. about things, um, especially with chakras, auras. Mm -hmm. You know, as a, as a Christian, uh, you know, being an ordained minister, going to seminary, grad school and all that, we're taught that, oh, that's, that's the devil. You know, chakras and auras and, and things. Uh, you know, anything Eastern, even uh, Tai Chi. You know, oh, you're, not, you're gonna get a demon. You know, I don't know about the background. You, you know about how some things are, I guess, the way churches are, or? What's your Southern background? Baptist churches? Oh, yes. Okay, so you're familiar with that. You? I don't go to church. No, no church. <laughs> But are you familiar anymore. with any type of people trying to keep that in the box, is what I would say, right? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and I learned so much from them when they began to, you know, explain about chakras and explain about auras and, uh, and, and crystals. 
I, you know, it immediately clicked in my said, well, that's this scripture. You know, when I began to understand exactly what it is, I said, oh, that's uh, this particular scripture. That's this particular scripture. And I shared it with them, and they were, like, excited. Oh, wow, you know, that's in the Bible. I said, yeah, here it is, it's exactly what you're talking about. Uh, the problem is, you know, ancient people, uh, they knew these things. So, you know, they didn't have to do the type of explaining that's necessary to a 21st century uh, Western mindset. You know, we just read this stuff and we just think it's, you know, poetry or something. Whereas, uh, you know, people during biblical times or during ancient times, ancient cultures and communities instantly recognize what was being said there. And we have to rediscover these things uh, in these times so that we can, you know, minimize uh, our dependency on drugs and Western medicine and even uh, Western psychology and Western, you know, psychiatry, which Western psychiatry is all about diagnosis, prescription. Okay, you've got this problem, you're this type of individual, here's the drug we're going to put you on. And that is all that they do. We have uh, talked with psychiatrists, Christian psychiatrists, and psychologists who said that, you know, that's exactly what we do. You know, that's, that's pretty much the extent of it. But we can decrease our dependency on those things with things like the law of attraction, emotion code, body code and affect our own healing. We, we've, been, we've been doing it for years, uh, Leslie and I now, uh, w working with people, uh, like I said, with cancer, diabetes, uh, MS, you name it. And we've, we've had great success, you know, with prayer also. And, you know, we still pray and we still lay on hands and uh, do things the old-fashioned way, but we integrate things with new modalities as well. And uh, like I say, we've had a lot of uh, success with that. So I just want to, you know, congratulate Denise on her healing from leukemia. Uh, great, great job. Uh, glad we could, you know, play a small, small part and be along for the ride. and. We really appreciate the things that you taught us that helped us to grow as well. And that's what, you know, these meetings are all about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cross-pollination. You know, you know, we want people to bring things to the table. We want to explore them and, uh, you know, share with each other about our experiences in making things happen, whether it's finances, whether it's health, whether it's relationships, whatever it is. Uh, we're trying to uh, facilitate that uh, through coaching, through, you know, group sessions and things like that. Uh, anybody got any comments or anything? Uh, That's great. Um, well, let's just go through, like we normally do, the social media group. Yeah, I, I was kind of got into... I was going to ask Rita, uh, what do you know about Law of Attraction? Other than the movie and the book. Yeah. That's, that's um, a lot. <laughs> so you saw the movie and you yeah. read the book too? Mm -hmm. Which, which right. book? There, there are a ton of books out there. Which one did you read? The original one. What's the original? I don't know what the original um, one is. What's her name? Burns? Rhonda Burns. Rhonda Burns. Okay. Uh, the, the one secret. that we've kind of, I, I don't know how it The works. secret. Yes. Oh. Okay. okay. The, um, the one that we uh, kind of became our you know, uh, unofficial, official uh, journal, or it's called, let me show it to you here, I've got it, it's asking it's given. Oh, yeah. Okay, you, you Esther and Jerry Hicks. Yeah, have uh, you read this? No, but yeah. I'm familiar with that. You're familiar with okay. it. And I don't know how that happened. It just, we all showed up one day, and everybody had a copy of this book. Mm -hmm. Talk about Law of Attraction. Okay. So we just said, okay, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll go with this one, you know, since everybody is, you know, has a copy of this and, and is familiar with it. 
uh, we, we tend to uh, follow this particular uh, method. Now, I always give my opinion of the book. I think it's a right. great book for Law of Attraction. The first part of it, though, is talking about her experience. Uh, Abraham. Hmm? Abraham. Yeah. Abraham, right. In channeling. Mm -hmm. Something that I am totally against or would warn people not wow. to do. Why is that? Okay. Like that. I was just getting ready. <laughs> okay. When everybody, and everybody that comes into the group asks me about this, they ask me about channeling. A young man, uh, I think uh, last week, last wow. Thursday, asked, you know, wanted to talk about channeling. I just, this is how I describe channeling. Channeling is like having unprotected sex with an AIDS-infected, HIV, intravenous, drug-using hooker. It's pretty serious, Vince. Okay. <laughs> and that's how you really feel. Uh, <laughs> I like her. Okay. Um, that's how I describe well, channeling. You know, there has to be an understanding about the spirit realm. We teach about the spirit realm every Wednesday. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I do understand that when you open the realm, you yeah. have the possibility of things coming through that... You don't. You, you might don't not like. Okay, and when you when you're you doing that, when you're doing channeling, right. there is no filter. Matter of fact, you tend to get, uh, you know, this goes back to law of attraction. You may you tend to get whatever you are already, and if you're not sure what you really are, you're really taking a chance because you you know like attracts like. That's the law of attraction. So if you've got some negative aspects to your uh, personality or in your subconscious, whatever you want to call it, and you open yourself up to the spirit realm like that, you may get exactly what you are, and you may not like more of what you are. One story, mm -hmm. um, one of our colleagues was uh, trying to do deliverance on a gentleman. Uh, deliverance is the Protestant word for, you know, the Catholic exorcism, okay? And Leslie and I are exorcists. You know, our original training was that we've done several of them. Right. Uh, Early in our training, we are, you know, we were part of our um, church that people came because they had demonic oppression. So, the things would manifest. So we, we've seen quite a bit of these, but one of our colleagues was, was telling a story about a man who had been channeling, and he had, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, I say he had contracted a spirit that he did not, did not want. It, it, it was just tormenting him. And he was having a very difficult time um, uh, affecting deliverance, so you know, getting rid of this this thing with the guy, and so he said, "I said, wow, uh, I didn't invite him to invite the Holy Spirit, you know, the Spirit of you know Jesus or the Spirit of Christ into his life, you know, maybe I should do that, and that would help me to you know help this gentleman get his freedom from this thing." And so he asked the man, "Would you like to invite the Holy Spirit into your life?" And the guy goes, "No way." <laughs> When I get rid of this spirit, I don't want any of the spirits ever, ever again. And to a Christian, that's like, why would anyone not want the Holy Spirit? I mean, it, 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 there's just no side effects, you know, ever recorded about that. You know, it, it's, you know, completely a good thing. No one ever says, oh, I don't want the Holy Spirit. I'm just tormented. I can't stand it anymore. You know, that just, ne it never happens, you know, and it, it never has and it never will. So this guy was so tormented that he didn't want, he said, no, uh, nothing from the spirit realm whatsoever. I, I don't want to have any contact, in, you know, with, with spirits or anything else ever again. So if you want to channel, that's the risk that you're taking. Um, even uh, when we first started the group, and we had a lot of new age people here, 
uh, I asked him, I said, would you, you know, would you like to be um, trained in deliverance? And they all go, oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to do it. They, they call it entity. Right. Okay. I don't want to do any entity stuff. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I said, nothing to be afraid of at all if you, you know, if you got the Holy Spirit, you know. You know, no problem whatsoever. But, oh, boy, they, they wanted to stay away from that thing. But everybody, I don't know what the fascination is with this channeling myself. You know, as a Christian, uh, <clears throat> the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And as I tell people, all means everything. You know, but we've had people come to the group who may channel or whatever, you know, and they ask me my opinion of it, I just tell them, you know. We don't exclude anyone. This is an ecumenical, secular meetup. Uh, I express my opinion. You can express yours, no matter what it is. Okay. If it's totally opposite mm -hmm. mine, that's fine, you know, tell me about it. I'd love to hear it. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, we respect everybody's opinion here. You know, we don't slam the door. I, I would not have learned the things that I've learned uh, this past year as the, you know, the moderator of this group if I had a closed mind, if I didn't listen to people and let them uh, tell me of their own beliefs and experiences. It, 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 it has enhanced my Christianity, if anything. Uh, so, I'm always, I'm all ears, you know. Yeah, I do, okay, with him. Yeah. <laughs> we actually yeah. are a couple, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like, sometimes he just has a lot to talk I about. I picked up on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he just has a lot to talk about, I love to talk. And so, I'm like, okay. Any, any comments, oh, questions, yeah, you know, about any of that and channel? Have you ever experienced, what's your opinion on channel? Well, I don't have much experience with it, so uh -huh. I don't really have an opinion. Um, okay. Other than um, people who speak in tongues, I don't know if that's the same thing as channeling or not. But um, um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't disbelieve. I just have not. I haven't had a sincere experience with it for me to okay. believe. So. It exists. I, I don't doubt that it exists. No, I didn't at all, you know. Um, I mean, we've had conversations with demons. She sold millions of books. Must yeah. Be true. Yeah. <laughs> she became a millionaire with it, you know. I just say, okay, you go right on ahead with your million dollars or whatever. Uh, and I've even heard um, Miss Hicks uh, on YouTube while she was channeling right. to a, you know a large audience. Yep. And everything. And, you know, okay. Something Great. I do believe about her and the, the Abraham, Abraham is that we are vibrational beings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that um, when, we, um, when we allow that into mm -hmm. our, our, uh, our energies, our energy bodies. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. We use that term here all the time. Uh, we talked about what is your vibration. Remember, we were talking Saturday. Um, one of our members coined a good phrase that I like to use: "Is your vibe deter your vibe determines your tribe?" Oh, okay. That I, could I, be. I, I like yeah. that. You know, because whatever. Because that's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna be around. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you're gonna attract. You know, whatever frequency you're vibrating at, you're gonna attract that same vibration and frequency. And that same energy. Have y'all ever noticed that when you're when you're just experiencing a, a, a thrilling type day and somebody is, is trying to speak to you in a negative, you know, they, they're starting to just complain about everything. Oh, this, yeah. oh, that, oh, that. And pretty soon they just stop talking because you're not going along with, mm -hmm. with what they're yeah. saying. It's like, yeah. I'm yeah. sure it'll be fine. <laughs> well, you, you, bring, you bring up an, an, an interesting point. Um, with the law of, of attraction or the law of vibration, you know, whatever term you want to call on, let's say that there is someone in your life that 
I just, for lack of a better it's getting on your nerves. You really toxic. don't want this person. Right. Toxic. Hmm? Toxic. toxic. Yeah. You're toxic. That's a good, you know. You don't want this person in your life anymore. Yeah. But you cannot change anyone. We can barely affect change in ourselves. We only have control over ourselves. If you want to get someone out of your life, mm -hmm. change your vibration. Mm -hmm. Change your energy. Because once you do that, and this is the law of attraction, I guarantee you that person will either change to match your vibration and your energy, or they will get out of your life. Yep. Somehow, some way, the universe will move them along or promote you to something where they're, where they're out of your life. You know, that's the law of attraction. Uh, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So as you think, that's what you're going to become. And that's what you're going to attract into your life. Uh, that's why it's it's so important to find out what are you vibrating. The cells in the, I don't, has anyone ever read uh, Dr. Candace Perk's yeah. book called Molecules of Emotion? Yeah. Your your cells in your body, and this is this is you know not any new age thing. This is science. Your cells in your body are actually vibrating. And in order for certain chemical reactions to happen in your body, the different cells have to be vibrating at the same frequency so that they can bond and cause the, you know, the biochemical uh, reactions, you know, that you need to, to occur in your body. So every cell in your body is vibrating. And now if we want to go to physics, physics says, that we're all vibrating right now. Every, this desk is vibrating. Everything is vibrating. Everything has a frequency. So when you, like I said, you need to know what it is you're vibrating. When I started the group, you know, I, I, we're, we're pretty, you know, Leslie and I are pretty well versed with, you know, the basic principles of law of attraction. And, you know, we were using that. And we were getting results, but I, I wasn't getting the type of results that I wanted to get as fast as I wanted to get them. So I realized, I said, there must be a block. So intuitively, you know, through, through the Holy Spirit or, you know, just, you know, Father's intuition. <laughs> uh, I knew that there had to be a blockage or a hindrance. So I began to, you know, with other law, you know, of attractors, uh, I said, you know, I have to be, I have to have a block somewhere or a limiting belief. How can I get rid of it? And everyone, first thing was, uh, oh, meditation, meditation, meditation. Okay. I'm good at that. I'm a grandmaster of martial arts, been training ever since I was nine. Uh, I know how to meditate. Okay. And then from meditation, we started talking about the subconscious mind. Because after all, this is, this is the law of attraction. And what is in your subconscious mind is attracting. And it may be attracting something that I don't want because we're not, that's why it's called the subconscious or the unconscious mind. Because we don't know what it's doing. And if we don't know what the subconscious is doing, we can never um, be the rulers of our own destiny because we're always going to be controlled by something that we know absolutely nothing about or don't have a clue as to what's going on. Unless you're very aware and you're saying to yourself, hey, I, I'm a talented well-educated individual, why don't I have this happening in my life? I've got too much, you know, going on for me not to be successful. I, uh, give a little analogy, you know, a woman looks in the mirror. I'm a beautiful, attractive, intelligent, professional woman. 
Why am I alone? I've got friends who are overweight, who are this, who are that, and they all have boyfriends, husbands, and significant others. What is wrong with me? Do I scare men away? Do, you know, what is it? She probably just wants to be alone. Huh? She probably just wants to be alone. <laughs> no, I'm, no, she's asking the question, why is she alone? She's asking herself. Why am why am am I alone? I want to have someone in my life too. And probably, you know, the reason is there is something in her subconscious that is repelling. There's something, you know, that you know the guys are picking up on. And the same way with men, you know. You know, my best friend, uh, you know, I'm 58, he's 58, we graduated from high school together, he makes great money, but he's almost always alone. Never been married, no kids. He doesn't want to be alone. He has resigned himself that he's going to be alone, but it, it was never his plan to do that. He is attracting something that is keeping people away. Women. Women, yeah. Unless he's gay. Mm -hmm. He's not gay. He hasn't revealed that to me. <laughs> so it's repelling them. Yeah. Uh, we've had the discussion. You know, as far as I know, he's not gay. I'm pretty sure he's not gay. But you never know. But he would still be my best friend if he was. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, or anything. I love him. He's, he's a brother. But until we find out what's in our subconscious, we will not be very effective with the law of attraction. Um, another scientific study. The conscious mind processes 2,000 bits of information per second. We're all engaged with our conscious mind right now. The subconscious mind processes 500 billion bits of information with a B, billion with a B. 500 billion bits of information per second. Uh, Vince, what's his name again? Pacenti. 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 Yeah, the phone that he's, he's a motivational speaker. He was a, a, a winner, a winner Olympian. I, I don't know if you want to go, but he was in the winter Olympics. And he does motivational speaking uh, to corporations. And, and, you know, they call him in to speak to their... Uh, executives and sales staff and things like that. He wrote a, a book in allegorical form called The Ant and the Elephant. The ant is your conscious mind, mm -hmm. and the elephant, the elephant is your sub, your subconscious mind. In a tug of war between an ant and an elephant, who do you think will win? The elephant. The elephant. Yeah. Okay, but the ant is responsible for communicating our dreams, hopes, and desires to the yeah. subconscious. Yeah. The problem is the ant is very into logic, words, you know, you know, the English language or whatever language you speak, things like that. And so we're, we're, we're making these positive affirmations. I'm going to be the number one salesman this month or this year. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going on a diet. You know, New Year's resolution. I'm going on a diet. I'm going to lose 20 pounds, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The first chocolate Sunday that comes our way, bam, there we go. The subconscious is not on board. The ant has to learn the language. The, the subconscious is waiting to be programmed. And it can only be programmed by the ant. But the ant has to learn the language of the subconscious. The language of the subconscious is feelings, emotions, pictures. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have to figure out the subconscious language. Then you can program your subconscious. Now you you know you're really using the law of attraction because you're putting into the subconscious what you really want, 
And that's what we discovered last year when I started the group. And, you know, we embarked on ways. Uh, I have a lot of handouts. Well, maybe not a lot, but I have a few handouts uh, that are on the Meetup Group website right. on how to get into the subconscious. That's what it's all about. Everything uh, is about getting into the subconscious. Some people may say, well, I try, you know, I read things on the internet. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I read things on the internet where people say, well, you know, I've been using the law of attraction and it's not really working for me or it worked up to a certain point is what I hear. And then it just kind of falls apart. I can get this much done, but I can't go any further. Now, when I hear that, I know what it is. They have a limiting belief. They have something in their subconscious that believes that they cannot advance any further. A great story is the gentleman, you know, that asked me to go into business with him. Brilliant mind has fantastic ideas, but he can't carry any of them out. The only thing he can do is talk about them. But the minute you say yes to one of his ideas, and start implementing it, he falls apart. He disappears. You know, he, he's gone. And he, be, I mean, I've been down here a year now. Why do you think he does that? Well, from a Christian standpoint, I would say he has a spirit of fear. It is we, a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. it sounds, that sounds very familiar. That mm -hmm. sounds very familiar? Mm -hmm. We would call it a spirit of fear. From the Christian standpoint. Uh, Afraid from, of what? Everything. Succeeding. Yeah. 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 Success. Yeah. You, can have a, you can have a fear of success. And, uh, you, can, you can have a spirit of fear that tells you you don't deserve it. And so whenever you get close, you know, you, you're a lot, you, you can go so far. But the minute you, you go above that threshold... You're gonna get knocked back down by you know by your sub, you know, your own self subconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm familiar with subconscious. So <laughs> he obviously had. I, like I said, I've been down here a little over a year, just over a year, a uh, year and a couple months. He he pulled out of the thing when I first got here. Then he he begged me and begged me. I mean, almost like we were dating or something. He pursued me. You know, and so I said, okay, well, let's put it on paper. Let's do this. Let's get it going. Two days later, he said, well, you know, that's a good deal for you, but it's, it's not a good deal for me. He was the one that proposed the deal. I didn't, I didn't present any terms or conditions or anything. I just said, okay, let's do it. And he calls me up two days later saying, oh, that's a good deal for you, but not a good deal for me. You know, so the question, you know, I didn't say anything. Okay. You know, but the, it begs the question, then why did you propose it? This is your deal that you're turning down. It's almost like, okay, you're in real estate. It's like somebody uh, presenting an offer. Say, hey, go present my offer. Okay. And then, you know, keeps pulling out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or better yet, a seller who sets a price said, okay, I want $200,000 for the house. Someone makes them an offer of two hundred thousand, and they go, "Oh no, no, no! I, I couldn't possibly sell for two hundred thousand." <laughs> then somebody comes and makes them an offer for two hundred and ten thousand, and they steal back out of it. That's that's how he is. He huh? He just pursued me again. We actually started working together. Uh, Last week, no, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Okay. Come around since I came. Okay, and then he pulled out again, and I'm just laughing at it because I never. Uh, he knows better now. <laughs> de I never depend on him. Yeah. Right. Okay, but he has fantastic ideas. I I keep hanging around with him because he says ideas, and oh, that's pretty good. I think I'll do it. You know, <laughs> you know, he, he's worth keeping around. 
because he has great ideas. But I really would like to mentor him or, or coach him or counsel him, whatever you want to call it, uh, because he's killing himself. Imagine having that type of mind and having those types of great ideas, and you can never implement them. I'm going to have to imagine it. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Let it go. Go ahead. I'm going to have to imagine it. I know exactly how he feels. Say what? I don't have to imagine it. I know exactly how he feels. Yeah. yeah. Well. It's shortening your life. That type of turmoil, inner turmoil, is shortening your life. We have, um, when we started looking at Psy K and the field of, and anyone ever uh, read Bruce Lipman's book, The Biology of Biology of Belief? Right. You can, you can go on, the, on, on YouTube, and it, it, he's got a lot of lectures on there. The Biology of Belief. Of uh, Belief. Yeah, of Belief. Your belief actually, uh, what you think actually changes your DNA. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Okay. You can, if you haven't had children yet, you can begin a belief system right now that you will pass down genetically to your children. It's a, a new field. It's, this is not new age mumble jumble or anything like that. Not to say that new age is mumble jumble. This is not new age, it's a scientific study. It's called epigenetics. It's the field of epigenetics. You know, I think I heard that on a TED, TED Talks. Yeah. On a what? On a TED, TED Talks. Talks. Okay. Y'all watch that? Those? Yeah. They're great, aren't they? They really are. And if you can learn to program yourself, your, your mind and your emotions are speaking to every cell in your body. The way he described, I think he says you got something like 500 trillion cells, or I forget the exact number. And it's, you know, your aunt, as I call it, is actually, or you yourself are actually the ruler of a large nation. And you have to ask yourself, uh, what type of, uh, you know, what type of ruler am I? What type of governor am I? Am I a good governor or a, a poor governor? What you think and what you feel affects every cell in your body. There are, it, there are hormonal, hormonal, not hormone, hormone, there are hormones that are affected by every, every thought that you have affects the cells in your body. It's sending a message. If it's sending a message of fear, turmoil, or conflict of any kind, the cell stops growing. It freezes because it's in defensive mode. And when we, you know, you ever see anybody who's getting ready to fight that's hungry? No. Everything, you know, the blood is going to the extremities. Fight or flight. Okay? The cells do the same thing. So when you are having, when you have an internal conflict going on, the cells are not moving toward nourishment and regeneration. They're not getting rid of waste, which ages them and poisons them, and you know, and of course, poison the rest of you. Then, you know, thirty years of this, you got cancer or something else. Okay. And you wonder why. When the cell is being bombarded or in an environment of positive thought, positive, happy emotions, it moves toward nourishment. It nourishes, it excretes, it, it, it moves the waste out, it, 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 it subdivides and regenerates itself properly. And Subsequently, those people live longer. That's why meditation is so important with law of attraction. Extremely important. I um, on some previous sessions, I, I, I read the group uh, some of Deepak Chopra's uh, books, 
uh, some ex excerpts. I really love. You know, I used to stay away from it because I, I used to really didn't like Deepak Chopra. Okay, but I've uh, this past year I've, I've just I have totally embraced him. Okay. By the book, he has his he has like an audio book format of his book on YouTube. He's so boring to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> he has that it gotta voice. be interesting. Yeah. You yeah. gotta have a passion. His voice is just like so monotone yeah. and soothing, and it's just like a. He's got an accent. Well, which one did you try to listen to? The. Spontaneous? Yeah, that one. Okay. That's real What's cool. the name of it? Uh, uh, Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire. You can listen to it on. Um, on YouTube. I have several of his books, or I've read several of his books. Which ones have you read? Um, the one about Jesus and Buddha. Okay, I, I didn't read that. Um, Did you read Super Brain? No. No, wait, yes, that's his new one that he's co authored with somebody yeah. else. It has, is that no, that's, that's his second to new one. He came out with a new one called uh, Super Genes. No, Super I mean, Brain, uh, he co-authored with a, a neural I, uh, a neurologist. I've read the Super Brain. Okay, mm -hmm. and he's also he just came out with one um, in October. It was either October or November, uh, called Super Genes, where he's talking about all epigenetics. Uh, Bruce Lipton, who wrote the Biology of Belief, uh, wrote some of the foreword, you know, and everything. Uh, he, he really uh, he's. Uh, talking about the field of epigenetics and how that's the new uh it's the buzzword hmm? it's a new buzzword yeah kind of, i guess you can you can you know the field of epigenetics is fascinating and about the microbiome that's um you actually have a say a, a third mind you have your conscious mind subconscious and then you have the mind of this colony of cells that actually send thoughts to your brain. That they hijack your emotions mm -hmm. and make your brain produce chemicals or, and hormones that facilitate their growth. Right. Or make you. Know, you, you know, the gut feelings. You know, you got yeah. you know, a lot. There is a lot of reality about heavy emotions set up in your stomach. In your, in, in the gut area. Huh. Some people get nervous like and get intuition yeah. and yeah. like that gut feeling. Um, even people getting, you know, you, you, disgusted you, you, or something, they why do they get queasy after they see or don't like they, the feeling? It, it it even will tell you what foods to eat. I shouldn't say tell you, but it it, it affects <laughs> they get what they want. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have cravings. Yeah. Okay. You know about that? <laughs> and you know, I'm, 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 skip, I'm trying to be basic. You want comfort? Food is comforting, isn't it? It's an emotion. But it it it, it dictates what uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, some people who are angry all the time, or what they call rage hogs. It's not so much that they're just mad all the time; they become addicted to that emotion. And when I say addicted, every thought, every emotion produces a chemical signal. And you can get addicted to those signals. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anger, rage produces a chemical signal or hormonal <laughs> signal that your cells recognize. The microbiome recognizes it. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't get it, it does things to make you get mad so that it can get what it wants. Again, law of attraction. So we need to, you know, we need to find out the language of the subconscious so that we can program it so that we live longer. There are uh, certain thoughts will turn off aspects in our genome code and our DNA that causes certain cancers. And there, there is a method using what we call PsyK, P-S-Y-C-H dash K as in kite. It's called PsyK, or some people may call it uh, energy psychology. 
where we can program the subconscious so that it turns, it sends thoughts and emotions that will turn off the DNA that causes cancer, diabetes. And this is proven scientifically. This is, you know, all the latest research. You know, all the latest uh, research is not, it can help with autism, um, Alzheimer's. All of these things can be controlled. In other words, they're saying you're not a prisoner of your DNA. You're a prisoner of your thoughts. You really um, don't even necessarily have a genetic disposition for cancer. You know, with a lot of women, they talk about uh, predisposition for breast cancer. It is not necessarily, it, it, it re the latest research suggests that that's not true. You just, that. You, know, you just yeah. think like your mother. Yeah. You grew up with your mother, you, you learned to think like her. Act like her. You hear her voice. Yeah. yeah. So, whatever she got, you wind up getting, oh, it's genetic. You know, that, that's, that's been the old, you know, that's a, a paradigm that is changing or being, you know, severely uh, re examined right now because epigenetics suggests that that is just simply not true. And if we can, you know, if we can produce the right environment, we can produce healing. I was talking about Denise earlier. Uh, you know, she, she took all the steps to change w what was going on, you know, between her ears and in her heart. And she, she's been able, you know, to affect a healing for itself. Now, as she told me, that, you know, tonight before the meeting, she said, yeah, I took the medicine that they gave me. She said, you know, that got it under control so that the symptoms weren't, you know, manifesting and presenting, you know, you know, giving her the discomfort and, and that so that she can, you know, get her head together, so to speak. You know, but mainly, it, you know, there is no cure. So the medication they gave her just kind of, Mass. Stabilizes everything for a bit. Right. So that she could, you know, could focus and, and, re and redirect things. So the law of attraction is just so important. You know, we really, really need to exploit this thing. And it, um, the, um, I, I, I remember years ago, even before I got into law of attraction, when I was preaching and I was, uh, in a, a teaching series, and I quoted a scripture, you know, that, that says, you know, the Bible says, uh, you know, guard, you know, be diligent in guarding your heart. And I remember telling everybody, stop putting, you know, when you say, in my heart, and I was telling them, stop putting your hand on your heart when you say, in your heart. Put it on your head. Because that's that's really what's good. It's not really coming, right? It's coming from the, you know, the brain. So I say, whenever you read the Bible and it says heart, in your heart, you think brain. Okay? Let's get it straight. Let's, you know, let's, you know, deal with what's really happening. And the Bible says, you know, you know, take care to guard your heart because out of, out of it, flows the issues of life. So whatever you allow in here is going to affect everything about your life, whether it's your health, your finances, or your relationships. That's law of attraction. As a man thinketh, so is he. If he thinks he's healthy and well and happy, then he or she will be. If they're in a turmoil, the body is going to be in a turmoil. And I used to tell people, the body only does what you tell it to do. Not always. <laughs> well, see, that? That, she's still interested in not always. What you're referring to is the, yes, it is. the subconscious is not listening to your conscience. The sub, yeah, it's, it's doing what you tell it. It's doing what you're, it's not, it may not be 
doing what your aunt is telling it to do, but I guarantee you it's doing what your subconscious is telling it to do. A person, you know, um, you know anything about football? You ever heard of a guy named Mike Dicker? No. That coach. He was a coach of the Bears when they when they won the championship back in the eighties. We all, you know, you know, fired up guy. Uh, the classic. The cl yeah, the classic type A personality. He's still that way. Yeah. Um, he had to have hip replacement. You know, wore out a hip. That a, a classic type A personality is someone who is going to have hardening of the arteries, constriction, you know, of the, you know his blood vessels, and be prone for a heart attack. A type A. What, what what is a type A personality? It's very excitable. Very excitable. What else would you say about a type A personality? Very intense. Very intense. Yeah. What else though? What's the result of intensity and excitement? Results. <laughs> Got to change your way of thinking. <laughs> yeah. I understand. What's the no, What's the, the results of intensity well, and excitement? A A type personalities are leaders. They're yeah, leaders. They um, you know, their intensity is right. is so focused on on achieving that it's it's. What would, what is the result of that? I, I, I'll just tell you, okay, because a type, uh, uh, they're good leaders. What, what's the quality of a good leader? Someone who is hard. No. Yeah. Someone who is hard, no. impenetrable, you know, focused, their way or the highway type of thing. Hard, tough guy, tough woman. They're not flexible. They're, they're, not they're, flexible. They're, um, yeah, stubborn, which means hard. You know, you can't be a good leader if you go, well, maybe we'll try it your way. Well, what did you say, Jim? Oh, maybe, you know, you can't be vacillating like that. You know, everybody loves Reagan, because what was Reagan? You know, implacable, unbuilt, uh, unyielding, unbuilt, uh, unyielding, unbending. And then, oh, Reagan, you know, the champion of conservatism. Fire all the, con you know, the uh, air traffic controllers. You know, just get rid of them. Okay, tough guy. So you're unbendable, you know, implacable, unflexible, unwilling to give in. So your body does the same thing. Your arteries get hard and constricted. And that results in high blood pressure because it, it's not flexible to let the blood go through. A lot of times people like that may not have uh, deep relationships. They keep people out, they have a wall around them, you know, because if you're tough, you can't, you know, you can't be a softie. You can't imagine Mike Dicker being all warm and fuzzy with very many people. I disagree with you. You disagree with me? Tell me why. <laughs> Well, because an A personality, you know, to be a good leader, you do need to bring in other other sources of opinion. You, I mean, that that's what makes you a good leader is, is you know, if you're just going to be you controlling everything and, and being so hard and steadfast in, in certain things, that um, that's control. That's not leading. Okay. You can say that's control, uh, that's not leading. But I agree that that type of person would, would definitely have artery problems. Okay. They're going to have high blood pressure. They're going to have heart attack. And so based on that, I would have to say that I probably have a greater chance of being correct. Uh, we have a difference of opinion when we talk about the qualities of a leader, per se, and, and what they do. personality. Okay. But... When a person is like that, those people wind up with heart attacks. Heart attacks are caused by hardening of the arteries and not getting, you know, blood through. Hardening of the arteries, uh, plaque buildup, that is all caused by, by that, that type of uh, emotional content. Pro proven fact. You know, and 
the other per person, you know, the opposite of the, of the spectrum, you know, the person afraid of their own shadow. Okay, someone, you know, who, you know, easily intimidated, frightened all the time, worries about everything, all, you know, what, what happens to them? Ulcers. Okay, the body does what we tell it to do. Leslie and I have counseled people with, um, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it called? Not, I don't, fibromyalgia? No, not fibromyalgia, not that one. The one where people slowly you uh, lose control of their muscles and and and, and yeah. huh? Sorry. I, don't know. I almost want to uh, say multiple, multiple cirrhosis. Yeah, multiple cirrhosis is what they call an autoimmune uh, disease, meaning that the body attacks itself and eats away at the mild fascia sheathing around the nerves. You know, it actually eats away, and then eventually when it gets down to the nerve, it begins to eat away at the nerves, and you know, the people can't walk or, or even talk uh, after a while. The body's attacking itself. We had a woman, she's a colonel in the army, and she was so internally conflicted and so much inner turmoil against herself, it was manifesting as MS. When we led her through the steps to healing, and she, she got, you know, it meant ending a relationship too. Because here she is as a colonel, a person of high integrity and high honor. And she was having a relationship with a sergeant, which is totally against mm -hmm. military code. Military military huh? That's totally against regulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's this person who has this high integrity and, and, and high code of honor and ethics doing something totally dishonorable. Inter internal conflict. When she got rid of the relationship, and some other things, you know, that were, you know, coming up from childhood in that the symptoms of the MS began to fade away. Last time I heard from her, she said, I, uh, my aunt wants you to, you know, to have sessions with you too. You know, you guys are so good, you know, blah, blah, blah. The body just does what we tell it to do. Long forgotten. Okay. Oh, that's a good point there. A lot of the things that we've told it to do, we started doing it at childhood. And we forgot that we we call that an inner vow. An uh, inner vow? Inner mm -hmm. vow. When you make a, you know, the Bible says if you make a vow, you must keep it. Um, a uh, couple of good stories on inner vows uh, from our training. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a woman... Um, when she was a little girl, she had an older brother who was just a super brat. And she had the type of parents that uh, valued male children over female and just let her older brother just torment her uh, like crazy. And she said to herself when she was a little girl, you know, boys are just terrible. You know, I, I just, I hate boys. I hate Hate boys. That was an inner vow she made as a little girl, forgot all about it when she, you know, grew up and got married, had children, had girls, but they wanted a boy. She wanted a boy, her husband wanted a boy, but every time she would have a male fetus in her womb, she would miscarriage. Had about two or three of them in a row came to our mentor, uh, one of our mentors, John and Paula Sanford. They, you know, realized, you know, we automatically, we've been trained to recognize inner vows, you know, with a little talking. Again, uh, inner vow, what is that? Law of attraction, what are you attracting? <clears throat> Discovered the inner vow, took her back, she, you know, remembered, prayed through it, asked for God's forgiveness, next thing you know, she's pregnant, with a male child, 
carries the full term. When we find out that inner vow and renounce it, pray through it, and get it out of there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another uh, case was a, a woman who grew up during World War II in Europe, witnessed a lot of the Nazi atrocities and things. And as a very uh, young person, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she said, "If this is what adults do, I never want to be an adult." Of course, she's going to grow up, right? But she grows up as a woman, uh, never really goes through puberty, never gets her monthly cycle, doesn't develop breasts, and she comes to John and Paula Sanford to find out what's going on with me. Why is this happening? You know, ask certain questions, they take her back to that inner vow, renounce it, pray through it, break it. And all of a sudden, the body starts developing. She grows breasts, gets a monthly cycle, goes through puberty, becomes a voluptuous woman. You know, development was suppressed because she didn't want to grow up. How old was she? I don't know her age, but she was very, you know. I would guess. It, it, it had to be. Uh, uh, it had to be pre pubescence. It needs you know. instance. You have to understand. It's great emotion going on. It's not like you just want to say something emotion. Yeah. It was an extremely um, emotional moments. The emotion is such a powerful thing. So when you're saying these things as a child, and it, no matter what, doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, how old still, was she when she started having um, a cycle and, oh, and developing? In her thirties, at least. It was, I'm pretty sure, if I remember the story correctly, it's been years since I, they told it, but it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was in her thirties. Right. You know. Definitely after 20, 25, yeah. never being after, being after 32. Yeah. It wasn't 19, you know, she wasn't a late bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Okay. Uh, you know, but even if she was, it didn't happen until she, yeah, she broke down with it around those vows. Being, not wanting to be an adult. Remember, what did I say the, the language of the subconscious is? Emotion. Emotions. Yep. Strong emotion. And when people make an inference, as Leslie just said, oh, it doesn't. Oh, you know, I hate, I hate ice cream. You know, it's, it's, it's not. It's something made. You know, oh, I just, I, I, you know, and when it's done at a very young age, um, we tend to forget them. And uh, all yeah, of us have. I'll tell you one thing. I got to tell you. Love telling you about you know. I mean, one child, you know, we've had nine kids total. Um, we had seven together. And there's one child out of all of our children who I've always called him a teddy bear. He was just one. He's, he's always so cuddly. He always loved a hug. He'd hug like a koala bear. All right? Well, his body actually received that. His conscious, he liked it. He liked it as, as affirming my love for him, my affection for him. So he received that signal. Now, I want you to look at this picture, and you tell me which one is from Teddy Bear. I'm talking about this when he was a baby. I don't know. You don't know? Mm -hmm. They all look pretty huggable. Really? Mm -hmm. One especially. Might be the one. I don't know. I don't know. Which one would you say? You saw I was going to pick the one in the orange shirt. But you saw him right now, like if he was here, you'd be like, oh, I can see one. But then I thought maybe the taller one, because he's bigger. Big. Other than this. <laughs> Let's see. It's this one. You can't really tell. I guess I can see a picture of him right here. Enoch, the blue, with the, with the afro. Yeah, that's the one I was, I was going to say. Okay. Then, yeah. Enoch, he's, he's the only one that's not like skinny. A chair. Yeah. Type face. yeah, he's got the cuddly face, he's got the chubby, chubby face, chubby, and he's plush. I mean, when you when you hold him or hug him, he is like a teddy bear. He feels like a teddy bear, like he's got stuffing in there. <laughs> he's the cutest little thing. Well, he's just so funny. He's like six four now, but he's so and he loves to give hugs, of course, right? He loves to give hugs, and uh, and I see that you know it's. It's not just the chemistry. 
Vince is almost kind of like that in his body composition, but Enoch's body composition is, 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 you don't see no muscle, you don't see any definition, you don't see any bone. He's just, it's like, what is in there? And you, when you squeeze, it's like, you don't, you can't even find his bone. It's a charm. Yeah, it's a charm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flesh pack. And I'm just using that as an example because it's, you know, you speak stuff to your children. You know, they receive stuff. They, you as a child are thinking things, feeling things, Emotionally, as you grow up, molding you and your being. I even said to myself when I was young, I wanted to be like my mother. Okay, my whole, I think my whole body kind of responded the same way. But the body said, okay, you love your mom, and it's going to be just like your mom. When my mom is short, when my dad is tall, but nonetheless, everything else about the way my mom is built, I'm just like her, um, even character wise. But it's, it's interesting. Well, As, as I was saying, you know, one thing I think that makes us very unique is our attention to the subconscious, our focus and emphasis on it. Um, the secret, you know, all the other books and things elude to it and talks about what you think, but it does it from the old perspective or, you know, make a positive confession, you know, stay positive and that sort of thing. Uh, we have found uh, that, not we, research has determined that that doesn't work for about 95% of the people. Uh, you ever heard of the healing code? Yeah. I couldn't tell you what it is, but I've heard of it. You heard of it. it was written by or discovered by uh, Dr. Alexander Lloyd. And this was a, a follow-up book that he made. Uh, to the healing codes uh, called Beyond Willpower. And he points out, you know, they've done studies of people who make, you know, positive confessions, positive affirmations, go to these self-help seminars and everything. And only uh, about 5% or less of the, uh, those people can actually affect their lives with that stuff. Because, again, that's all... Um, that's all the um, conscious mind trying to uh, beyond willpower by uh, Alexander Lloyd. Yeah. And he, you know, he brings that out in this book that just making statements, no matter how often you do it, how great it is, it's going to have a very small impact unless it can get into your subconscious. And he even talks about, um, which I really like, uh, he doesn't like hypnosis. He says hypnosis can do more damage than good because if the wrong suggestion is put in there, then it, it you know, uh, the effects can be devastating. He gave an example of a session with, you know, that he was witness uh, to where someone had a slip of the tongue during the session, and the person picked up on it, and that their condition worsened because of that. So, hypnosis is a dangerous place, to, you know, state of mind to be in. It can be a good thing, I, you know, I, I, I guess it can be a good thing, I'm sure it can, but it has the potential for going completely the other way around, the uh, other way too, okay? So, yeah, I don't, re I don't recommend hypnosis. Nothing that I'm talking about is hypnosis, okay? Uh, you know, hypnosis and channeling is two, my two bugaboos, so to speak. But getting into the subconscious is so important to make the law of attraction work. And as I said, we're very unique that we put a great deal of emphasis on it because it's the only thing... Uh, that really ensures victory. Um, the field of epigenetics is based on it. Some, well, it's not based on it, but the subconscious has such an effect on it, on the field, that it's, it's worth studying. And Dr. Bruce Lipton, who used to be um, a professor of anatomy at the University of Wisconsin Med School, He's a, a cellular biologist, 
uh, you know, he talks about, about this. And, you know, just go on YouTube and, and pull up his, his videos and you'll see what I'm talking about. But the last minutes we have here, I'll kind of get into my um, scheduled material here. Um, and I, I, t I call this, you know, when I first got into um, law of attraction, they have what's called the universal laws. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like them. Some of them seemed okay, but others I was like, huh, what the heck are you talking about? What is this? What do you mean? And so I kind of came up with my own. And I called it uh, the four gates to paradise. And then I called uh, the last part of it, the 12 foundations to paradise. You have paradise, and then you have foundations. And I based it off of, uh, Reve you know, in the Bible, Revelations 21, 12 through 21, where it says, you know, where, you know, where we spend heaven is called, actually called New Jerusalem. And it's going to have, it's going to be a perfect square. Okay. And it's going to have four sides, you know, that you can enter in. And then it has a foundation of 12 layers, these different types of crystals. 12 different layers of crystal. Okay. So I, I, I based this analogy on that. And the first gate to paradise is the law of attraction. Okay. As a person thinketh in their heart, so are they. And that's Proverbs 23, 7. Okay. Then the second law, or the second gate, is the law of deliberate creation. We're made in God's image. We're creators. We're really the only uh, species ever created that can create anything. Deliberate creation is exact, you know, is self-explanatory. You are creating right now. We are all creating something. The question is what? As I said before, if you don't know what's in your subconscious, if you're not the master of your subconscious, if you're not putting the things into your subconscious that you want and getting rid of the things that you don't want out of your subconscious, then you're just a random, you're a chaotic creator. You're just, you know, you're coming up with Frankenstein. A million ideas. Huh? A million ideas. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, but that well. didn't work out too well for uh, Frankenstein, you know? <laughs> Random parts here and random parts there and that sort of thing didn't work out well. So we want to become a deliberate creator. Then uh, the third gate is called the law of abundance. The universe is abundant. You know, God's, in the Bible, God said, the cattle that graze upon a thousand hills belongs to me. And all the gold and silver belong to me. You don't have to step on anybody. You don't have to stab anyone in the back to be successful. You know, there's plenty to go around. It, it is. It, it just isn't necessary. It's not necessary. There's more than enough. Okay. So when you get that into your mindset that the universe is abundant. I don't have to be in competition with this person or that person. I just have to be in competition with myself and what I think. That's the only competition I have. You're going to be ahead of the game. And then the fourth law or the fourth gate, remember this is the four gates of paradise, is the law of allowing. Get out of your own way. One of the problems with law of attraction, or uh, that a lot of people, hmm? no, my problems. Okay, everybody's problem. Oh, major. Okay. Is when people decide that there's something that they want, they focus all their attention on. It. You know, I want to be number one in sales. I want to do this. I want to do that. 
and they don't realize what they're actually doing, they're not really focusing on accomplishing the goal. They're focusing on the lack of it. You know, when you say that I want to be, that's kind of negative because you're saying that you aren't already. And that's not the language of the subconscious. The language of the subconscious does not recognize time and space. It is completely in the now. So that's why I didn't go invite to party in the <laughs> That's why you what? I used to say all the time, I never get to party. I want to party. With the negative connotation thing. You <laughs> want to party? I would always think like, yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. I was so funny. I went to LSU. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, seriously. I, I, even in high school, I'd be like, I hey, wanted to party. I was never, well, I just couldn't because I always had to compete. Um, but I really did. I was like, I would miss a lot of parties. And I actually thought something was wrong with me. You know, I was like, why is no one inviting me? Because I kept thinking I couldn't. That's all because of high school. I always thought in high school, I really was competing all the time in the parties on the weekend. So it was like, I want to party. I want you to say that because I couldn't. And I was attracting more of that. Oh, okay. I get you. Exactly. Exactly what you, yeah. you, you were saying it because... You weren't partying. Right. So you were actually focus on I'm focusing on how I'm not. How are you not? And I'm going to. I okay. want to have fun. That, that, that. <laughs> I, was, I, I didn't understand you for a while. I was kind of like, what is she doing? I got it, Leslie. I didn't get that one at first. Like, oh, I was a little slow. That would be that still affecting me today because I'm like, oh, I want to travel. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's one of those things also. See, and when she says that, I want to travel, I want to party. You're focusing on the lack of it, the lack of travel, the lack of socialization or party. Instead of planning the trip. Okay. Right. Exactly. The emotion. If you want to travel abroad or to go somewhere, think about, okay, the plane ticket costs so much, so much, okay, and then I need new luggage, okay, I like that new Samsonite. You, 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 you have to see it, and you have to feel it. You yeah. feel your way to the top. You don't speak your yeah, way to the yeah. top. Okay, okay. we're gonna grab. I forgot my. What is this? My vision. Board. I was. Oh, okay. I asked you. Oh, right. Can we ship? Can we like? So okay. now, now let, let me let me get to let me let me finish right, this okay. point. Okay, so with the law of allowing and getting out of your own way. You, you feel it. You don't say things like, I want to. You think about and talk about it as, as if it is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And then you taste it, taste it, feel it, smell it, hear it, experience it with all five senses. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, getting out of, you, you know, you don't just... Think about, oh, I want, I want to go to work. I want to, you know. You're in your own way now when you do that. You have to get out of your own way. You have to relax. Um, unless, you know, when I was in high school, I used to say, I want a girlfriend. I didn't have a girlfriend in high school. <laughs> okay. Then after college, you know, last call, but in college, you know, I, I finally learned to relax. And I would just go to the party. Uh, whatever, and a girl would come up and say, hey, you want to dance or something, you know, and here's my number, you know, give me a call sometime or whatever. When I just learned to relax like that, they just, just came. I got out, I got out of my own way. You know, I, I just relaxed about it. You know, the guy who was, got to get a girl, you know, he's, you know, he's in his own place or whatever. But... Those are the four gates, and, and on the handout, I wrote some, you know, some scriptures that back each one of those up. Um, I kind of want to want to cover uh, one principle per meeting, uh, just like uh, Proverbs twenty three seven: "As a person thinketh in his heart, so is he." How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amos three and three. Now, you got to agree with yourself. 
You know, you've got, you've got to find a way to get your subconscious on board with the conscious. Okay, what you think about today, you will attract tomorrow. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you won't. Mm -hmm. Like attracts like. Egos do not hang out with doves. In order to walk together, you must have the same vibration. Okay? Yeah. That's point, you know, Saturday, I'll go over the law of deliberate creation a little bit. I, th I think we've pretty much established that today, that whatever is on the inside of you, you know, you'll soon see it on the outside. And we all need Sooner help. Or really, all need help. That's why I love reading because it helps bring the bigger thinking out of us. You know, out of each other and finally, you guys need to be busy. We got 15 more minutes. Huh? One of the things that um, you'll find it as a process and ask, and it is given, mm -hmm. they give you these processes to help you attract what it is that you want mm -hmm. in your life. Okay. Yeah. And my favorite is um, it's called the um, the prosperity game, where you take a thousand dollars and you have to spend it on something. You find out, you know, what costs a thousand dollars. It can be one item. It can be several different items, and you write them down. This item costs two hundred and fifty. This one a hundred. This one this much. And when it totals a thousand, okay, you look at it and you feel like you have each one of them. It's almost like a meditation. I like to do it first thing in the morning. And you imagine, feel the emotion of having each one. Then the second day you take two thousand, you do the same thing. The third day you take three thousand and you keep on every day. I'm up to about two hundred and forty some thousand dollars right now <laughs> that I have to spend every day. And what I do, I meditate on it. I actually feel what it is like to have it. this place right here. I, I did that. That's, uh, we don't have time to. Think. It's on a previous. Um, Last Saturdays. Go ahead and yeah. record that. If you, well, it's it's on Facebook if they want to zip through all those. It's recorded on Facebook. Saturday? Yeah, last Saturday. You put that's when you first used Periscope. And what's that Saturday? Last oh, Saturday. Oh, that's right. It was. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, it was. So it, it's, <laughs> it's on. It feels like it was just a few days ago. Okay. And you can take a look at mine. Yeah. And what about yours? And I also, another, you know, right now, if, you know, uh, we didn't talk about the emotional guidance scale. When, you know, the highest emotion, when you want to create or manifest something, you want to be in a mood of love, joy, or appreciation. Mm -hmm. That's the best emotion to create it. You can have that copy. Yeah, you can have that You don't want to be below seven. Let me, let me you see. Have that. Okay. You want to be from seven up to one. Anything below that. You can create or obtain your goals being all the way down to 22. Mm -hmm. But you're going to bring um, that thing along with it. You'll get the million dollars if that's what you're trying to get. But you're going to get fear, grief, depression, despair, and powerlessness with it. I.e. Howard Hughes. One of the richest men at one time, you know, by the time he died, you know, he was afraid to eat, afraid to go out, and, you know, couldn't enjoy anything of his will. Why is the Holy Spirit down here at number 10? Holy Spirit is down at which one? Number 10. This energy thing. Oh, we're not on the same page. No. 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 Who did I give you? You gave her energy. Why, 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 is, why is the Holy Spirit mad? You know that? Well, oh, this is what... This is what you should. Okay. Emotional guide. Emotional guide. It's a totally different thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One to seven is when you want to create. Gotcha. That's when you want to sit down there go. and feel it. When you when you when you have any of the top seven emotional states or consciousness, 
Because that's what you'll bring along with you. You'll bring contentment, yeah. hopefulness, optimism, positive expectation, enthusiasm. You bring that along with whatever you're creating. If you do it when you're in a consciousness or emotional state from 8 down to 22, you're going to bring that in with it also. Okay? So very important, the emotional guidance go. When I do that every day, if I'm below 8, just close the book and leave it alone. You know? Just, just, just don't do it. You know, wait till you... Uh, can get a, you know, Radio, meditation, your consciousness. Brings your vibration higher, whatever it takes. Yeah. Can I ever do any mantras? I'll talk about that. Yeah. Mantras. Um, because I, I feel they, for me, they do uh, upgrade my vibration. Okay. I, I, I would agree. Yeah. Um, with. I lost my train of thought. Um, the emotional guidance scale, we, we were talking about that. What, 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 what did I think? If you're not vibrating at a certain level, you just close the book. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've noticed it in mine. I have three things, label one, two, three at the bottom. Three things that I am appreciative about. If you find yourself in 8 to 22, write down three things that you appreciate. And feel, actually feel it. Three things that you, you don't have to hold it up, just tell them where to get it. Uh, no, go, to, go, go, go to our meetup.com law of attraction page for Shreveport. And you'll go to the more tab, you'll have you know, the numbers tab, you have photos, you have um, discussions, and then there's a more. Drop down to more, and you'll see files. When you get to files in the drop down menu, you'll see all of the documents that we're talking about here mm -hmm. the emotional guidance scale, the uh, four gates of paradise, and more. Or you can simply buy the book, ask, and it's given, it's in there. It, you know. Four gates of paradise? Not the four gates, I'm talking about the emotional guidance scale. Uh, the emotional guidance scale is in the okay. I'm the author of the four gates of paradise. Right, you got a whole lot of documents. Okay. So, write down three, every day, write down three things that you appreciate. And feel you. Everything that you write down to appreciate is going to lead you to appreciating even more. You won't be able to stop at the three. And I started off with very little things, like I was telling you guys, thumbtacks. I like to put up my kids' artwork and things that they've given me. Yeah, I also did that. Okay. And I was in my office in my cubicle at the time when I was doing this. And I, I said, wow, you know, if I didn't have thumbtacks, I wouldn't be able to put up. And I actually just felt warmth and appreciation and joy for thumbtacks. Mm -hmm. You know, so I started to try to, you know, make sure I can... Uh, appreciate small things, then the things that are really big, you'll have no problem at all. And if you do that every day for a year, you're going to have over a thousand things that you can appreciate. I can now go back, starting anywhere along this journey, and just read uh, the three things that are under my gratitude and appreciation headings. You know, to get my emotion up. It, it will be impossible for you uh, not to raise your vibration using that technique. And then one other technique we call the doubler. That's where you take something that happened the day before that was really good and write it down today so that you can relive the emotion. Okay. And by doing this, you learn how to produce these positive emotions at will and these states of consciousness that you need and you can tap into them whenever you need to. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I highly recommend this. The other one, and you see a lot of people doing this in a lot of different groups, is called a vision board. 
you know, get some magazines, whatever you need, it's, it's cut out the movie, pictures. Right? You remember the vision board? The, and all mm -hmm. the things that they look back over the years, they found the vision board later on. And, mm -hmm. and it was the same house he yeah. had, mm -hmm. that he had thought of. Yeah. Can I show you? Chateau. Oh, I'm sorry. Chateau has bought her vision board. I don't want to make a board like a poster board, but that's great. That's like a um, scrapbook. Yeah, so. Well, that's good. There's a lot of stuff there. That's excellent. I, yeah. I, I haven't even seen it yet, but I, I know it's going to be good. I, I love Catherine Everett. Everybody yeah. should love Catherine Everett. <laughs> that's great. Now, what about Catherine? Why do you have Catherine Hepburn in there? Because she wrote a quote in there that says that if you are making yourself happy, then if you're, make, if you're going out of your way to make yourself happy, at least somebody yeah. is happy. At least some. <laughs> so, did you, if you always do what interests you, at least one person is pleased. Okay. Yeah. So that resonates with you. Where do you want to go on a road trip? Everywhere. <laughs> I've already been to a lot of places, but I still have a lot of places that I would Yeah. Vince, uh, supposed to. Mrs. Aki Pacente, I want to call him Pascanti for a moment. <laughs> Vince Pacente uh, says, set up gold dot reminders. And you have to read the book, you know, I, I'll explain when we get more time. You have to read the book uh, or, or just get the handout uh, that we have, what that is. A gold dot reminder is something that randomly occurs in your environment that reminds you of the thing that you want. And whenever you see it, you're supposed to stop and pause and use all five senses to experience it. Okay? And you, it, the reason why the gold dot is so good, in addition to the vision board, is because you actually see it in real life. And it, it, it's random. You don't know when you're going to see it. You don't know when it's going to happen. But all of a sudden, bam, it's there. And if, you know, you, you stop and go, oh, yeah. And you see yourself in it. You see, you feel it. You taste it. You hear it, whatever it is. And when, whenever that random occurrence happens, you stop and practice. So you'll be practicing all through the day at various times. So it's great for your mood. It's great for your, for your vibration. And he calls that gold dot reminders. Well, I mean, just stopped by the RV place. I couldn't drive by it. I'm like, what one? <laughs> An RV? Yeah. Look, look, look. Know what it's like these days. Look, this, you know, these days, technology, you know, what they put in there. I would love to see what they have. And, and yes, we definitely want it. We need one. So, okay. so every time we see a. Um, an RV. Hey, you know. One RV. I really want to smell it, see it, feel it. I'll be inside one. And so they, you know, when you uh, start tracking that. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. You don't? <laughs> yes, you do. Well, I've already traveled extensively. So, you have. I, I, so you're satisfied with that. I, Quite happy just okay. right here. Where okay. have you been? We say it's um, extensively. Um, my husband and two of our kids uh, circumnavigated the Caribbean. Oh. So that's 14 countries. Wow. Then um, recently we retired in 2012 and we proceeded to circumnavigate South America. So, wow. on a sailboat. You're going to go around the horn? Yeah, wow. My husband did. I, I left him in uh, Fort Mont, Chile. I had been, we had been down um, as far as um, You didn't leave him because you were scared or afraid to go around the horn, did you? No, no. no I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Going around the horn is, can be well, quite dangerous. Well, they equate it to um, it's the sailors Mount Everest and there actually have been more people to successfully climb Mount Everest than have ever sailed around Cape Horn. My goodness. 
My dad, when he was in the Navy during World War II, when he crossed the equator, mm -hmm. that's a special thing. It was quite special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when he was aboard ship, he crossed the equator, and all the other sailors beat you up. <laughs> and they <laughs> you know? call you a shellback when you, um, when you cross yeah. the equator. Yeah. He, he told me about when he crossed, when he, you know, crossed, crossed the equator and everything. And, and going around the horn uh, is even more, spe more special than that. You know? Yeah, wow. I saw a backpack through South America, backpack through Central America. So, so Did you do yeah. Europe? No, I don't want had to much Europe? desire to do Europe. You don't want to do Europe, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Australia, I would do Australia. You do Australia. Um, some of the Asian countries, mm -hmm. um, I would do. Um, uh, I really want to go to Savannah, Georgia. Really? Of all places. Yeah. Now, isn't that the, the music capital? Is something like the music there in Savannah? I, no, no. I've heard that it is um, one of the most haunted cities in the world. Oh. Savannah, Georgia. I, I, I have but yeah, there are stories that float around. <laughs> and I there's, it's more, it's more um, yeah, I've haunted. I've driven through there. I thought, wow, it's more haunted than New Orleans. <laughs> okay. That'd be my fun thing. Yeah. Okay. Wow, I got to. But anyway, yeah. and I've been to Jamaica and yeah, lots, okay, of, so lots of different places. That's also and that's also so there you go. Love the little love. I kind of like just street work. That is interesting. Well, I would never think a street work would experience that you've had. Oh, it's lovely. Really? Oh, yes. The meat comes wrapped in sulfane. Um, you know, you've got styrofoam, you've got sanit sanitation, you you um, have clean water, um, you have the ability to go anywhere or do anything that you want. Um, people here really have no idea yeah. what it is like to have the food chain running around you, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, when you ask to use a bathroom, they put you behind a curtain with a bucket. You know, it's, it's uh, <laughs> you know, poverty here mm -hmm. would be very yeah. wealthy in some of the countries I've been to. Yes. Yeah. A dollar a day is just, yeah. just, you know, wow. You know. Really? Mm -hmm. We should much, much more appreciative of that. Oh, yes. And it changes your priorities mm -hmm. in life. That's really yeah. Important. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Your complete priorities. I mean, you know, it's, you know, you you. I don't know. My kids. We do things for comfort, and um, not style or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, popularity. I understand that. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's because we. We have been there. So then you don't wear heels, right? Well, so no. So I don't heels. <laughs> no, I wanted cowboy boots. I did get some cowboy really. boots for Christmas, well, and so cool they heels. have a little. They just have a little heel. Mm -hmm. Just tiny heels. Just yeah, I don't know how to wear. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, like that. It's so just a little. Just wear heels all the time. I'm like, yeah. No, I think my you know runners, runners don't wear heels. heels. That's right. We like our running shoes. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it's just a little after nine. Oh. And we kind of got started at around 7.30 because of all our technical uh, trouble. So uh, I want to end uh, addressing something that you brought out uh, with mantras. Uh, when did you be become acquainted with mantras, Fred? Where? Um, I do a lot of reading. I've read a few of those books you have in that stack. Yeah, and a few one? that I see around. But... Um, I am an avid reader, mm -hmm. and um, I'm always looking for things that spark uh, spark my spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I um, <laughs> my personal philosophy is you just never know. So you know I don't follow the religious doctrine. Mm -hmm. um, I I um, I believe that. Um, we are here to love, period. Since mm -hmm. the beginning and end, we're here to love. And, and so I do things that nurture that part of my spirit. Um, I know you said that you read 
uh, some of Chopper's, but I thought maybe you picked up, uh, you know, doing uh, mantras through him. Was it, wasn't him? Did you now, do? for somebody random, oh. and um, I tried it, and it truly uh, does lift your spirit quicker for me than affirmations or or platitudes of gratitude and appreciation and things like that it um because it's 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 the sound mm -hmm. um literally it's the sound that once you do it for a few minutes and you 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 do it 108 times for the um a full set of a mantra and after you do it for 20 times or so you find yourself trans you know almost transfixed on the syllable that you're using or the mantra that you're using and it internalizes and it just it just truly lifts you mm -hmm. yeah so. i would be now um i'll just tell the truth um <laughs> i get tired of saying this i guess i uh Christians are taught that that's a good way to the demonic. What, mantras? Mantras, yeah. You know, our, our training, Leslie and I's training, is to be against mantras. And the um, reading uh, Chopra in his books gives some examples of a mantra that he suggests people to, you know, try. And I looked at them and everything, and I have to conclude as an intelligent, you know, thinking person, no, you cannot get uh, demonized by saying that I do do that I do do <laughs> over and over again. That's, I'm making fun of, but you know, saying the mantras with the sounds is not going to um, make you susceptible to a demon. Call my phone. Hmm? Okay. I have a mantra ringtone. You got a mantra? Okay, let's hear it. That's cute. Okay. <laughs> What's the number? No, it is. That 903 918 No, You're going to have people from Europe calling me. 908. Say that this. Sorry. I should have stopped you. It'd be pretty good if you can get a real okay here to Shreveport here as a real estate agent. <laughs> I have a mantra too. Want to hear the mantra on my phone? Sure. Oh, good. 918 402 6206. 918-402-6206. You hear my mantra. 918-402-6206. Yeah. The cell tower must be pretty far away. <laughs> but I, I, I like that. Yeah. But, I find that intrusive. <laughs> intrusive. Everybody likes like you know. I, I really just have it there for me, mm -hmm. and I really get kind of embarrassed when I'm in a, a group of people and it rings and everybody goes yeah yeah yeah. I used to have one. I like rock. Uh -huh. And uh, I like Cheap Trick. Mm -hmm. I want it all. Mm -hmm. I want yeah, it all. Yeah. And I want it now. You know, everybody liked that one too. But I said, eh, maybe I'll switch. <laughs> you know, but um, mm -hmm. like I, as, as I was saying, um, Christians are, are are taught that uh, mantras are a bad thing. And when I finally actually read and saw a mantra in one of Chopra's books or a couple of his books, I concluded this cannot give you a demon. Yeah. Okay. The problem is most people 
that do mantras have a belief system that goes with it that can lead to um, some negative energy, let's say. A belief system outside of Hinduism or Hinduism um, or? A belief, a belief system, period, whether it's um, Hinduism or, or outside of Hinduism or whatever, they usually have something else. I don't want to, I'm not going to say Hinduism. Um, like I said, we're ecumenical here, so I, I would never put down somebody's belief system. But there is something else going on, in my opinion, that, that is negative in any one system that could possibly, you know, that might lead to um, some negative energy. And that all thing, like, uh, for instance, I would typically tell people that one of the best ways uh, to the demonic is um, promiscuous sexual things because whatever that person has you're going to have now spiritually and in one of our classes he you know uh forget his name but he was telling us that he was had a session with a woman who was in the prostitution so he was expecting all kinds of demonic manifestation when he was you know going through a session with her and he said, surprisingly, she had absolutely none. She was, she was fine. She didn't have any. And he was like, wow, I'm shocked. Because, you know, we're taught to expect that with people who are very promiscuous. And it is true a lot of times with people who are really promiscuous. We, we're going to get a lot. Then he was, had a session with a preacher's daughter who had only had one sexual experience in her entire life. And she was full of them. Wow, just the opposite. So well, I think it's probably the way you're taught to believe something, the childhood story <laughs> that you tell yourself. Yeah. Well. yeah. So, Maybe you know. Maybe she was a prostitute by choice instead of by. Oh, you mean a woman that was, you know, she wasn't forced into it. It, it wasn't a traumatized, tra very intuitive trauma, right. definitely can be an open door to, to things like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, could have been to myself, okay, I can make some money, you know, yeah. put myself in balls. That's right. Okay, well, let's right. see, $1,000 an hour or work my ass. Okay. <laughs> quite, quite, quite possible. Um, it's a bit so these, you know, when I say we've been trained this way, it, it's not absolute. These are just some common things that, that we see when people have a problem. You know, have you, you know, same thing, you know, when you go to doctor's office, have you been to a country where they have, you know, uh -huh. mosquitoes with this type of thing? Have you been here? Oh, okay. If you've been here and you've been there, and, you know, you got these symptoms, okay, we think we know what's wrong. But it's not 100% foolproof. Um, it is probably, you know, some people who engage in mantras, channeling, have other things going on that can lead to um, negative energies, demonic stuff occurring in their life. Uh, not always, not all the time, but sometimes, okay? Uh, maybe, you know, the incident is higher. Now, I've recently started chanting, but I only chant Hebrew, which, uh, is considered the divine language. When God said, let there be light, he was speaking Hebrew. So I only chant Hebrew, and I only chant uh, various phrases in the Psalms and in the Bible. And so, what does it do for your vibration? It um, <laughs> only done it, um, when I say I just started, I mean, I mean like yesterday. <laughs> Literally, and how did it make you feel? I liked it. I'm reading as I go along, and the same things that you just said is uh, what this person said in her book. It's written by a, a female rabbi, mm -hmm. and it helps you go within. Yeah. And then, uh, do you do you include a moment of silence after the after the? Um, 
Yes, when I when I've ended my mantra. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she says, "Okay, you should be attuned to things. Ask, what is this? What door did I open? And what are the possibilities from this position that I now find myself in?" Uh, and you know, you, you go through, you know, kind of like a check now. Mind you, I got a lot more to read, but that's just one one part. And Hebrew, there's a different expectation, uh, at least, you know, at least for me, because I understand uh, the power of the Hebrew letters and their vibration. The Hebrew letters themselves automatically vibrate, and when you chant them, uh, well, I can't 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 get into that. That's just there's a lot more. We'll be here all night. Yeah, <laughs> but. I chant those, or, or you can say that's a mantra, if you will. Uh, I chant those, and so I eliminate the possibility of anything else going on. I'm careful, very careful with my spirituality because of the possibility. You know, I, I'm like a surgeon. You know, sure, you can go in and do an operation and don't wash your hands, and the patient may be just fine. Okay, but... I take all the precautions. I'm, I'm going to scrub up and, and everything. I'm going to put on the gloves. Yeah. I'm going to put on the gown. I'm going to put on not only you know the mask. I'll put the the shield over too. You know, uh, uh, really, I, I, when I do spirituality, it, it's akin to wearing a what is it a level four hazmat suit with its own oxygen tubes yeah. running into. It. I, I take that type of yeah. precaution. Uh, with things, you know, especially since I minister to other people, because when you deal with other people, it's one thing to just do something for yourself, but when you're ministering with other people, when you're going to get into their quantum field, uh, then you need to be extra careful. You you need to do you need to take the precautions that a surgeon would take or someone working with, in the lab, working with Ebola or something. So I, I'm extremely careful with what I allow myself to come in contact with because He's I don't... He's super sensitive. I mean, his spirit is very sensitive. Uh, I always worry about him when he has to go somewhere on his own. Because um, we were also been taught about territorial spirits. It'll actually have an effect on him. He can feel the territorial spirit in certain areas. And it'll affect him. So he'll, he'll know. It's like, okay. Um, and so, yeah, he, he knows. His rear is clean. His rear is not too clean. <laughs> clean. I have to come to one of my sermons. We're Yeah, there's a whole lot we could, we could have to talk about. But, but yeah. um, that's, you know, kind of the basics with Law of Attraction. And, you know, we'll, we'll, you know each session... We'll cover another basic principle till we've kind of gone through these. And I really hope you'll read some of the material. I'll list some others that you might find interesting too, because you know, I did most of the talking tonight, but it's always better when it, you know, when you guys are telling your own, own experiences. Right. Uh, we normally would start off our meetings with okay. And we call it a win. Did anyone have a situation in their life this past week where they used the law of attraction and you know and got some results? And everybody will tell their experience, and we will comment on that, talk about ways we can duplicate it, enhance it. Or if somebody is having a problem in a certain area, okay, what are you doing? You know, okay, oh, well, try this, try that. You know, you know, so. You know, it's it, this time is really for sharing. You know, yeah. more okay. more so than just listening, listening to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I enjoyed the evening. I found it enlightening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It was such a pleasure to meet all of you. You too. Thank you. you too. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to meet again. Um, you can leave and come back? Um, on Saturday? Saturday? No, not this Saturday, but maybe next Thursday. Okay. okay. That's the 4th. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? 
So tell that you have any questions. You brought your vision book. Great job. I said I bring it in here. And can, can I see your your diary? No. no. Is that <laughs> something okay. Doesn't want to show me your diary. That's personal, most, mostly. So. Oh, oh, oh! I'm yeah, okay. I I always show everybody mine because mine's is not. Yeah, because mine's mine is very different from yours. Mine when I'm writing, I'm. I use it as my my time alone with God. I, I in okay. my writing is what I'm, I'm speaking to Him. Hey, this is what's going on. This is how I feel right now. And then I do the exercise. Okay. But well, mine is, is time alone with God, also with God, the universe, and everything. But glad, I'm glad you're doing. Yeah. You know. Very good. I'm glad you're doing. I need to do my more. Yeah. <laughs> I've been journaling journaling since I was a teenager. Oh wow! Here's uh, another yeah. one. This you heard me mention. Baby. I guess we want uh, oh, the, the emotion card. I've not read it. I I I I read it. it. I okay. highly recommend that one too. Um, well, I guess we want to stop. Listen. I guess we want to stop transmitting. Okay. Great. Oh, she got her card. I'm gonna have to. Thanks everybody for joining us. Good introduction for you.